In this demonstration we're going to manipulate some of the components in our design, uh, change their properties, their name, uh, the order and the grouping using the tree control and the other tools in Aspire. So I'm going to start by looking at the names of these items. If I select the, the flourish here we can see this is one of two flourishes with the same name, almost certainly because it started life as the same component that's simply been copied and mirrored. Uh, now having things with the same name is not a problem per se but it's not a great idea because it makes things slightly difficult later on to um, select the right thing. So I'm going to change the name and we can do this in several ways. The first way is I'm just going to select, click the item again um, that's been selected and that brings up a name edit box in situ in the component tree and I'm going to change this one to the left hand flourish and that sets the name. As you can see that's just the same as you might uh, see in Windows Explorer to change the name of a file. Um, in general we've tried to make the component tree behave like Explorer in as many ways as we can. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is show you that we can um, move items around uh, in the tree by dragging them. So I can take this flourish and just make this one uh, sit below the other one and I'm just clicking on it and dragging it down. Uh, Aspire indicates to me where I'm going to move it in the list and when I let go it places it in that position. And that has actually changed the composite model uh, building order. Uh, so that's a really convenient way of, of changing the, the, the build order of your components, which is obviously important for the end result. Uh, but we'll look at that in more detail um, a bit later on. So the other flourish I'm going to rename a slightly different way. Uh, what I'm going to do in this case is select the component uh, properties tool, uh, which is a, a um, a tool which allows you to change all of the properties, the dynamic properties associated with the component. So it doesn't change any of the, the underlying model of the component, but it's extremely valuable for uh, tweaking and making small modifications that are all completely reversible. Um, one of the other things it can do, of course, is set the name. So in this case, I'm going to set this one to be called Flourish Right. So that's an alternative, simply an alternative way of changing the names of your components that you might find more convenient. Uh, while we're in this uh, dialog, let's take a look at some of the other options. In particular, you can see the icons here relating to the combine mode of our object. So in this case, uh, we can adjust the combine mode from uh, add, we have subtract, we have the merge highest, and also the merge lowest points on the previous component. So all of the combine modes are available here. If I change temporarily this flourish to add to those components um, that come after it, uh, which, well, the, the components come before it, it's first in the list, so it won't make a difference in this case. Um, you can see that it's updated as well in the tree control. So the tree control is telling us uh, something about the combined modes as well. Uh, the little dots here give us an indicator this is a group, uh, but also it shows us it's a group that's merge high. So you can see the text, for example, uh, as you'd expect, is added on top of the banner. So we'll set that back. Uh, that's the combine modes. Uh, you can get at those uh, equally well by right-clicking your objects, going combine mode from the tree control and adjusting the setting in that menu item. You can also come to the 3D view, double right-click, and you have the combine modes uh, immediately in the 3D view as well. OK, so I'm going to now use uh, the, some of the other dynamic properties here. We can stretch and scale this height, this uh, object in Z. And again, this is purely um, a uh, reversible change. You're not really modifying the underlying geometry, simply scaling it uh, using its properties. And that's really handy. You can always reset it using this button here. Uh, and we do actually have a problem in this example, so let's fix it. If I double click the pie group here, you can see I haven't had to exit my component properties tool. It simply changed the selection to the pie group and that's really handy. You can just move through any of your items uh, without having to close and open the tool again. Uh, we can see in our pie group that the texture, uh, the wood grain texture is poking up through the back of the dish. Now we really don't want that um, and there are several ways we could fix it. But the simplest way would simply be to raise the height of the pie group so that it doesn't intersect the texture underneath. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in on that so we can see the process and I'm going to adjust the base height dynamically uh, using this control here and you can see that I can just budge that component around directly 
until we get the situation we like. It's a very convenient way of working. If at some later date I want to go back to zero, which can be a bit tricky from the slider bar there, I can double click the tick mark in the center, and this is the same for all of the slider bars in Aspire, and that will automatically set that back to zero for me. Uh, I can also edit the property directly uh, just from its control there, uh, and that will update uh, automatically as well. Not 0.6, but 0 0.06, otherwise that would be really excessive. Okay, so that's resolved that problem using the dynamic properties. We can also select colors for our components here, and there's a uh, an additional option here that temporarily switches off the red highlighting, and that's really useful when you're wanting to select the color of your object. So let's just choose a solid color uh, and make it brown. Um, you can see I, it's quite awkward for me. Well, actually, the grey was probably a better example. It's quite awkward for me to see what colour that really is because we're seeing a highlighted grey. Uh, so I just need to temporarily turn that off and I can see the true colour that I've selected for that item. Uh, so that's really handy. Um, it gets uh, reset uh, simply every time I close this uh, item, it will reset that anyway. So it's purely there while you're playing with the um, rendering colours of your objects. OK, so that's simple uh, manipulation uh, of your components using the component properties uh, and the right-click context menus.